Aloha! Very few things say Big Island Hawaii like the papaya. Most of America's favorite papayas, the solo type, are raised right here in uh, Puna near Kapoho, Hawaii or Kea, Hawaii. Puna is the source of most of our papayas. The nice smallish solo style that we call it, the Hawaiian type. There's a lot of information out there these days about papayas and uh, GMO crops. Um, just to let you know, the solo is not a GMO papaya and it is still the major papaya of the industry. Uh, this papaya right here is a Waimanalo solo. Uh, it has a short neck on this one because this is the female form of the solo. We call it solo because the plants are generally hermaphrodite, but on occasion we do end up with female and male plants in the group, but it's called solo because ordinarily one will do. Uh, this one here is a female and it's getting pollen from a hermaphrodite growing over there to set its fruit. As I said, it doesn't have a neck on it. Also, it's a Waimanalo solo, and the Waimanalo solo is a necklace papaya. So, what was last year's vegetable patch, mostly cabbages and corn, this year has turned into pineapples and papayas. Um, papayas are so cheap here on the Big Island that it doesn't really warrant me producing a lot of them as far as for sale. But papayas happen to be one of our favorite fruits and so we eat a lot of them. We plant papayas for us to eat. The papaya is a wonderful fruit because it can be eaten when it's ripe and it's delicious, very good for you, helps your digestion. But it's also eaten green here on the island as a green papaya salad. Oh, just to make sure we had plenty of them, I put in 18 solo papaya the other day out here. This guy right here is a classic Hawaiian solo, and it is the hermaphroditic form because it has a neck right there. That neck indicates it's from the hermaphrodite papaya. So this one makes both male and female flowers together. Um, it's perfectly fertile, and it makes a pretty good set of fruit because of that. This one is Waimanalo solo. The leaf is a little different shape. It is necklace. And it appears to be a female again. Papayas enjoy good drainage. And this right here is a special hybrid cross between Solo and Maradol. And if you look here, I have placed it on top of a bank about three feet high to guarantee that there will be no extra moisture around the roots. A lot of guys here grow them on piles of cinders. And uh, they do like really, really good drainage. My soil is just a little bit uh, water retentive for papayas, so I have to be careful where I plant them. Growing papayas is a relatively simple affair. Uh, these right here, I have planted the seed, freshly extracted from the fruit, into six packs. Once these get going and root in real nice, then I usually do one more transplanting into a three or four inch pot. Here you see papayas in three and a half inch pots that are ready for sale or ready to go into the ground. Um, that process takes a few months. It's a little bit slower than growing a tomato. Usually I'll go from this pot to the customer's hand or into the field here on the farm, but on occasion I will shift up one more size. Yeah, right here is Waimanalo Solo. Uh, in a gallon pot. Uh, it's getting to the bottom, so this is getting close to ready to get out of here and get into the field. This right here is the Exotica papaya in a gallon pot. And just in case there was anybody who didn't think you could prune a papaya, if you look right here, I accidentally snapped this one off by dropping it on the ground a while ago. And here's the two regrowth shoots. And so pruning papayas is entirely possible. And if you have limited space in a greenhouse or in a sunroom, uh, if you're over in the mainland, you want to grow them, Solo is a dwarf papaya, and you can prune them to keep them short. It starts with the seed. 
basically you need a papaya that has seeds in it or you need some papaya seed papaya seed can be extracted and dried uh, it will store easily for at least a year I've never pushed it beyond that so I don't know how much further but it'll store for 12 months when in the dry state although I do find that um, papayas like so many fruit the seeds come up so much better when they're coated in fruit slime if, instead of trying to clean them off diligently and then drying them out for planting if you just take them right out of the fruit stick them in the soil the fermentation of that fruit pulp somehow seems to break dormancy and speed the germination I get much better germination off of seed planted dirty than clean uh, this seems to be some kind of a misconception about uh, fruit and fermentation and seeds and mold. Um, I get a lot of response from people about, oh my goodness, oh the seeds I planted, they got mold on them, what should I do, you know. Um, mold and fermentation are natural in plants and one reason plants do have pulp around them is because when it ferments there's alcohols that are produced that somehow increase that seeds of germination, triggers a germination. I don't know all the science behind it, but what I do know is planting dirty seed comes up better and faster than clean seed, okay? And wet seed oftentimes also comes up faster. In some cases it's got to be wet or it's dead. In the case of papaya, um, dry is fine. And the, you know, the papaya seeds, when they're wet, they look a whole lot like uh, like fish eyes, you know. Here they look a lot like peppercorns, and they are actually peppery. There's a dressing made over here out of them. They have a peppery taste, you know. But either way, wet or dry, and uh, I just spread the seed over the surface of the soil, put a little bit of soil over the top of it, quarter inch or so, and let her go. Now, as far as how to acquire papaya seeds, um, well, there's a lot of different ways, but I know that the papaya has gotten a rap uh, because of genetic engineering and I hate getting involved in this stuff and I really don't want to talk much but I do know that you're going to want to know and you're going to ask me so um, you know I, I, my problem with genetic engineering is that I don't like the genetic engineering companies the way they do business and many of the products they produce okay I don't like them, you know, I wear t-shirts and such uh, that indicate that. But on the other hand, I find a lot of the people that oppose genetic engineering, um, they're a lot like the Salem witch trials or Frankenstein having the castle charged with irate peasants carrying pitchforks and torches. I mean, there's not much logic to it all. Um, a lot of pretty nasty genetic engineering things that have been done silly silly things and stuff that I don't approve of but the papaya eh, to begin with it's a ring spot virus was the problem was why they did this to begin with and what they did was they took a little bit of strand of DNA out of that virus and they inserted it onto the genome of the papaya in the lab what this amounted to was essentially the same thing as if you go in and you get a flu shot. You're being vaccinated with a bit of dormant uh, disease. You know, when you do that, the only difference is with humans, well, we're going to shoot it in. It's a one-time deal with a, with a syringe. In the case of the papaya, well, they actually stuck it inside the cell. It's on the DNA strand. Uh, so it's kind of a permanent inoculation that will go on through generations. Now... I don't see that as being something dangerous or scary for my health, all right? On the other hand, just because I do not support genetic engineering companies or their work, I don't eat GMO papayas and I don't grow them. So for those of you who might be worried about whether you are or are not consuming or eating GMO papayas, the GMO papayas that are commonly around these days are either the rainbow papaya or the sun up papayas like sun up strawberry okay according to seed sources at the University of Hawaii who distributes these things the solo papaya the Waimanalo solo papaya 
the sunset papaya and the sunrise papaya are non-GMO. Now sunset and sunrise I believe are hybrid papayas uh, but they're not GMO papayas according to the university. Me, I grow solo and I grow a bunch of papayas that uh, are not touched by the GMO stuff. Uh, the exotica papaya is a non-GMO for instance. Uh, uh, I have a, a thing over here I call Peter's Papaya. Uh, it's Again, it's a cross between the Mexican Maradol. That's a great big honking papaya that comes out of Mexico. And our Solo here, that's a really nice papaya. Now, the potential that because GMO papaya is raised here in Puna, that the pollen could drift from a GMO stand into a non-GMO stand is definitely a reality. Now, there isn't a lot of pollen drift with papaya. The majority of it is insect vectored. And so, if there are a lot of bees around and you live next door to one of these Kapoho papaya fields where they're growing the GMO types, then you probably have your seed cross-contaminated. That isn't going to mess up your fruit if you have non-GMO fruit growing. It will only mess up the seed. And so, there's no concern there. If you're getting your seeds from a source that seem to be pretty clean, um, then you're growing non-GMO papayas. Here in Mountain View, I'm at least a thousand feet up the mountain from where they grow uh, most of the papayas, and so my distance is by miles from the fields, far too uh, distant for bees to fly. And so the chances of cross-contamination up here is not likely. You get too much further up the mountain, you can't really grow papaya anyway. It gets too cool. Uh, here, uh, just borderline. If I keep them well fed, they keep coming on. Uh, that's about all I have to say about papayas and GMO and non-GMO. Otherwise, those of you who live in the mainland and you're not down in South Florida or San Diego or Hawaii or some place where a papaya will naturally grow in the garden, um, then try using Solo or Vimanalo Solo. There's also a uh, Taiwan Red Dwarf that I've used in the past too that are all short Papayas, uh, Limonalo is called low-bearing, uh, for instance. These are short papayas that could be grown in, say, 15-gallon pails. Um, I've done this before. And using bright, sunny picture windows or heated greenhouses and whatnot, it's possible to have papayas growing right in your home. I don't think the quality is quite as good as one that's ripened here in Hawaiian sun under the rain, but it's a lot of fun. I've done it. And the papaya, because it will yield in, uh, well, maybe about two years from a seed, uh, and because it's fairly compact and it can be pruned, does make a excellent candidate as a tropical fruit for a house plant. Better than so many things people w would like to try to grow. Um, so, you know, the... the uh, we talked about growing coffee, for instance, uh, recently, and I definitely advocate the use of pineapples as house plants too. That's another great, great choice. You want to grow some tropical fruit in your house in New York or Minneapolis? Papayas, pineapples, coffee, great stuff. All work out pretty well. You can do it. So, happy gardening. Enjoy those papayas. That papain enzyme is so good for your digestion. So these are really healthy foods, and they are super foods when it comes to the amount of vitamin C and vitamin A in there. They're on the top of the list. Good stuff. Happy gardening.